today we're talking about Jared Kushner, the only Kush Jeff Sessions is a fan of. Wow, does he look like a dad trying to fit in at a rave. Anyways, Jared Kushner is the senior advisor to the United States President. Which, yeah, that's pretty vague. But don't worry, his responsibilities are negotiating peace in the Middle East, solving our opioid epidemic, diplomacy with Mexico, if that's still possible, diplomacy with China, wow, this is getting overwhelming, reforming veterans care, eh, that's a few weekends project, right? Reforming the criminal justice system, which should be a high priority for this administration considering the amount of staff that's going to be there soon. And of course, lastly reinventing the entire government to make it work like a business. Great. So it's never a good sign when reinventing the entire government might be the easiest thing on your chore list. Because we're not an 8 hour show, we're just going to focus on peace in the Middle East. Because there have been some recent Kushner related news. US President Donald Trump's senior advisor and also his son-in-law Jared Kushner in an interview to a Palestinian paper, the Al Quds, has said that he is ready to work with the Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas for a possible peace plan. Alright, so we're transitioning to working with Palestine instead of our old strategy that made Benjamin Netanyahu laugh in maybe the evilest way possible. So I'm looking at two state and one state and I like the one that both parties like. I'm very happy with the one that both parties like. I can live with either one. I mean, can you at least do us a favor and in public pretend to take this seriously? At least the camera zoomed in enough to the point where you almost couldn't tell that he did one of those The Office glance at camera moments. Are we living in another dimension sitcom right now? I mean, look at his face! And I like the one that both parties like. Anyways, yes, we tried to employ a strategy of working with Palestinians. And as you can imagine, well, it got weird. Five months ago, Jared Kushner began quietly shifting his focus from brokering a peace accord between Israel and the Palestinians to tackling the dire humanitarian crisis in the Palestinian enclave of Gaza. Because, well, I mean, we've pretty much done everything, including building a big and beautiful wall, which, well, America probably paid for. Instead, the idea transitioned to, hey, what if we make Gaza into a place that was decent to live in, get some investment and development in there. This is where things get complicated though, because after decades of being united in hatred of Israel, there's now emerged a huge rift amongst Palestinians as well, because this peace process was going so smoothly already. Poverty in Gaza is an epidemic with no cure in sight. 60% of young people are unemployed in an economy blighted by 10 years of Israeli blockade. But in recent months, the situation has got worse, with the Palestinian Authority cutting salaries and electricity payments, which is affecting everything from hospitals to water treatment. The object to bring Hamas, which rules Gaza outside of the Authority's control, back into line. All right, so let's break that down. Basically, Hamas controls the Gaza Strip and the Palestinian Authority, the party that Palestine's president belongs to, controls the West Bank. The report came because the Hamas government has a unique problem. They buy their electricity from Israel, but they don't recognize Israel as a country, so they rely on the Palestinian Authority to pay Israel for their electricity. Just think of it like the geopolitical equivalent of the relationship between Cohen, Trump, and Stormy Daniels. Nothing happened, she doesn't exist, he's just writing her checks because he's a big fan. Seeing opportunity, Abbas, Palestine's president, stopped paying that bill to try to bring the other major party, Hamas, to the negotiating table and get control over his entire country. But they toughed it out with 20 hour a day blackouts. This is still somewhat unresolved with Hamas not sending all of the taxes collected and makes the strategy of pushing foreign investment to Hamas controlled Gaza Strip a little weird, especially because… The United States formally declared the Palestinian group Hamas a terrorist organization in 1997. Yeah, so let's develop their territory. And let me tell you, the Palestinian Authority is pissed, because in a super weird turn you now have America and Israel planning to rebuild the Gaza Strip while Palestine is sanctioning it. 
To make this even weirder, one of the main pushes of this initiative, in a story I would have expected to see reported by truthnews.freedom.israel, was actually broke by Reuters. Israel asked Cyprus to consider it a shipping route for Gaza. Wait, what? Yeah, so goods can be shipped directly to Gaza rather than going through Israel, although Israel and the UN would still be in charge of security. But like, that sounds very helpful. What's going on here? Well, for that, let's go to the most popular man in Gaza, Jared Kushner. They even made a banner for him. Well, he's recently been on a trip to the Middle East to spread interest in investing in Gaza. Jared Kushner is apparently busy putting the finishing touches on America's initiative. Kushner, who's set to be the architect of the plan for the Israelis and the Palestinians, recently paid another visit to the region. He sat down for talks with the leaders of the Israeli regime and four Arab countries, namely Jordan, Qatar, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia. But no meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Yeah, the Palestinians aren't exactly jumping at the opening of this GoFundMe page for the Gaza Strip. But that doesn't matter because the trip was motivated by the fact that the Trump administration plans to use its close relationship with Qatar and Saudi Arabia to convince the Gulf nations to invest around $1 billion to assist the impoverished area and its nearly 2 million inhabitants. Ok, so Qatar, remember a year ago when we said, We have to stop the funding of terrorism. I decided, along with Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, our great generals and military people. The time had come to call on Qatar to end its funding. Well, you know what? Maybe Hamas got a bad rap. Let's start that funding machine again. So seriously, what is going on? Because everything I've said in this episode runs counter to everything I would have expected. Well, people are a bit confused, but the Palestinian president has an idea. The Palestinian leadership warns the countries of the region against cooperating with a move whose goal is to perpetuate the separation between Gaza and the West Bank and lead to concessions on Jerusalem and the Holy Cities. Yeah, who needs your two-state solution when you could have a three-state solution? Splitting Palestine based on one party to make it weaker is actually a pretty good idea. Someone's been reading Putin's playbook. Anyways, unsurprisingly, this investment opportunity isn't being seized by everyone. The White House blamed Hamas, the radical group that runs Gaza, for the deadliest day of violence in nearly four years. Well, that sounds like about as good an investment as a Jill Stein re-election campaign. Anyways, yeah, elephants in the room, the Gaza Strip isn't exactly a great place to put your money right now. Considering A, it's run by a government that's considered by many to be terrorists, although that's not stopping investors. I do know something that will scare investors though. High taxes, ooh, spooky. Now for those of you who aren't fans of this, don't despair because on July 23rd, 2018, after five months it was announced that Kushner might have realized that raising money for a potential terrorist state has its downsides declaring that no foreign investors are willing to pour money into Gaza during what they label a Hamas-driven conflict, Mr. Kushner and Mr. Greenblatt, the president's special representative for international negotiations, are rethinking their effort to build Gaza's economy as a way of opening the door for broader peace accords. Seriously, what the hell are we doing? On one hand, we have the president of Palestine, Abbas, who is a member of the Palestinian Authority Party. And we described as... Here's what Jared Kushner told the Palestinian newspaper. He said, President Abbas is committed to peace, no reason not to believe him, but I question President Abbas's ability or desire to finish the deal. He has the same talking points that haven't changed in the past 25 years. A peace plan hasn't been achieved during that period. Great to hear from our lead negotiator. He's in the West Bank just ducking our calls and getting annoyed because our lead negotiator has said the administration will soon present its Israeli-Palestinian peace plan with or without the input from Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. So that's going to work out just great. Agreements are always the best when one side doesn't agree. Anyways, Abbas is trying to sanction the Hamas party which runs the Gaza Strip to reunify Palestine. But America and Israel are trying to improve that area for humanitarian reasons. Which might be the true intention, but it's not. 
The effort might be failing because nobody wants to invest in a government that may or may not be considered run by terrorists by the very group fundraising for it, with early reports suggesting that Kushner is trying to sweeten the deal with several hundred million dollars in aid for Gaza, which geez, that's a lot of money. But that was rebuked on July 23rd, aka the day this episode dropped, because Hamas has given Gaza to a state of depreciation, Mr. Kushner said on Sunday. Provocations will not be rewarded with aid. Well, I'm glad he finally figured that one out. So with all that considered, I think we can expect Middle East peace any day now. If this is plan B, we might need a longer alphabet. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, if you want to support independent journalism investigating Trump's cabinet, subscribe to our YouTube channel for our weekly episodes. As always, thank you for watching.